Yeah, recording in progress, it says. Okay, got it. There we go. And our we're streaming live on Facebook, and we're, uh, uh, rec- yeah, okay, we're okay, we're fine. Everything's good. Oh, yeah. I've been having uh, all kinds of problems with my internet connection to, to, not to Facebook, not to that stuff, but to my... Uh, it's uh, been a big deal here with my uh, uh, trying to get up uh, to GoDaddy with uh, with it. So, you know, I'm having problems with my internet connection, but the internet connection should not give us a bad problem here. And in fact, look at all the people that we have waiting for us. Uh, there's uh, Steve Bender, and there's Edward Berger, and there's uh, Mike and Candy. Uh, that's Mike Chisholm. Uh, that's Edward Berger. Let's that's see. right. So, uh, let's see here. Wait a minute. We're still waiting. For uh, let's see here. Okay. All righty. Uh, let's see. Marjorie, admit. There we go. Okay. Hello, everybody. How are you? Welcome. Good. Good Monday to you all. Uh, yeah, I just been having nothing but problems with my uh, internet since yesterday. Wow! Uh, and uh, it, 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 for this, it's no problem. It's anything that I have to do with GoDaddy, which is my, uh, the, the the place I link all my stuff to. So anyway, <laughs> where's the audio coming from? Oh, it's probably me. I'm in an airport right now. Oh, okay. Well, put yourself on mute when you're not talking, okay? There you go. What are you doing at the airport, Mike? I am just coming back from California, having uh, just had a really nice vacation with my family, and then gotten to see Mr. David Letterman. Oh, okay. All right. So that was pretty fun. I boarded in about 10 minutes. I just want to say hi to everybody. Did you meet up? With, did you meet up with Dave? Not personally, but I did get an autograph. <laughs> <laughs> and it does look like a, a real one, by the way. I told you that, Alex, yesterday. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of times people, when they give out autographs, they just have a staff member sign. Oh, no, it's usually a, it used to be a Lori Diamond autograph, you know, but I, I know his handwriting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, you know. I never could understand why people get autographs. Never, never made much sense to me. It ever makes sense to you, Shecky? With certain people. Yeah. Yes. yeah, I totally understand. And I don't it. sell them. So I'm not getting it because, you know, I have a Ted Williams autograph photo. It's not because, oh, I can make $1,000 on it. Yeah, yeah. Mike, what are we seeing? So that's the picture I got autographed. That's, oh. uh, that's David Letterman. That's him making fun of me in the audience about a month before he retired. And uh, he signed this one to Mike, my best friend, David Letterman. And the other one he signed, I got another one too. And uh, he signed it to Mike. Hello, Mike. Nice seat, David Letterman. So I'm going to put it up in my podcast studio. Oh, okay. Yeah, Tom, did Tom Keeney facilitate that? Uh, Tom Keeney and, uh, and somebody else who put a little bird in his ear. So. Whoever that person is, thank you very, very much to that person, whoever did that. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, gee, can I get a can I get an autograph of you, uh, Mike? Just so I can <laughs> Yeah. If I didn't think you're being facetious, I would absolutely send you one, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is a media influencer, whatever the hell that means. <laughs> yeah. Mike. Who I am? No, Mike. Oh, Mike. He's, he's a media. Uh, he's, got a, he's got a podcast, so he's a media influencer. Oh, okay. Couple, All right. Well, actually, them. actually, uh, Mandy's a, a media influencer. Go ahead, sell something, Mandy. Um, <laughs> what can I sell? I'm not sure. <laughs> Help me out, guard. <laughs> Caught you off guard. I missed the first part of the conversation. Yeah. Uh, how you doing, Mandy? I'm doing good. Good. Hello, and Steve Bender is here for a short time. He says he has to leave during the hour. Yeah, I've got to go tutor. It's four thirty. So, what do you tutor exactly? What in particular? Do you have a specialty? I'm helping some kids with their writing. Who kids who want to be better writers? Oh, okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so basically just going over their work and making suggestions to them, and, you know, how they could be better, how they could express uh, their are ideas. The, are, the, are these kids in school? They currently? are. Uh, the, what, what grade level? I've got uh, one ninth grader, one tenth grader, two twelfth graders currently. I see. And do they all want to be writers eventually, or are they just no. trying to write better stuff for their classes? So. Yeah, no, they just want to, you know, they're all good students who, you know, are held back or they feel a little bit held back by, you know, some of their writing issues. And they want to get better. So that's, yeah, that's the most fun to work with because it's not about. Them. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. not about getting better grades. They all get good grades. They just want to be better yeah. writers. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, how you so well, let's see here. And we have uh we have uh oh we have uh, Edward Berger, of course. That's right. <laughs> well that voice, huh? Yeah. Len LaFrisco. Hello, how are you? Who was up in Frisco a couple of weeks ago, right? <laughs> well, um, I live near Frisco, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't call it Frisco. Oh, they, hate, they do hate that. They do yeah, hate we hate it when they call it Frisco. Uh, were you, did they were like you born out? What? Were you born out here, Alex? Or were yes, you born I, I was born in San Francisco. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah, I was born in Frisco. <laughs> <laughs> I always hated people when they would ever say to me like, "Oh, San Francisco, this or that or whatever," and I had to say, "I'm from here." You know, I was born here. They're very, and I could always claim that because most of the people around me weren't born there. Right. You know, it's well, not. You a, live, you live near Co Coy Tower, didn't you? I, I was living in the shadow of Coy Tower on Telegraph Hill. One hour time. Uh, oh, 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 listen to that. One hour time. Echo Show 8 is ringing. What the hell? Yeah, Marjorie is cooking and she's using the timer. And then when the timer goes off, it in every room of the house says that the timer uh, is, you know, whatever. And well, it's long, funny. You were, born, you were born in San Francisco. You're in New York. I was born in Brooklyn and I'm out here. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's foreign exchange program. <laughs> I think hey, New York look, got the better deal. <laughs> look who's live from Lodi, ladies and gentlemen. Last week he was talking to us from Sweden, but he's back. Right? Where are you? You're in your office, are you? No, no, I'm in the white room. It's like <laughs> it's for the crazy people. Yeah, are the walls so, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Is that at your is that your home? No, no, no. I'm in Lodi. That's so yeah. office. I just, yeah. Yeah. I just park, park wherever I can when I'm in Lodi. So. I, I see. Okay. So welcome back. Thanks. Your trip went well? Yeah, we, yeah, we did very good there. Uh, five groups and we, we saved like uh, $12 million potentially for next year. So it's good. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. It's so, gorgeous wow. pictures. Of can, you spread a, can you spread a little of it to the rest of us? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you uh, like 50% of what I get, okay? Oh, okay, <laughs> fine, fine. And uh, Scott Boddicker is with us from Plano, Texas, the home of Snapple. I always like to say that. I know, I know. I wish you and Lance, Lance Armstrong, right? Yes, yes, sir. He was from Plano? Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. Boy, I bet you're proud of him. Very much. Oh, okay. He, he's the pride of Plano. He's the best thing that ever happened to Plano. Yes, Lance Armstrong. <laughs> oh boy, and uh, and of course Marjorie Miller, uh, who's not talking to me today. Ooh, oh. <laughs> she's her microphone isn't on, so she can't come back at that. But she's uh, she's she's uh, she's bit, bit mad at me because we had. Uh, we what had did you pick her up from? This? Alex, enough. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can't. Well, I won't talk about that. Please do not. I, I won't, because she'll never forgive me now for the rest of my life. No, no, it's the hospital that I'll never forgive. Oh, uh, the hospital. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what she call. You know, she's been she's been nursing a grudge for years, and boy, are her nipples tired. Uh, <laughs> wow. 
This room echoes, and I got to turn this volume down. Yeah. yeah. What room are you in? What is that? It's it's a focus room. It's a wellness room. So we, we don't have it furnished yet, but usually there'll be a couch in here. So when you feel stressed, you know how kids are today, you feel stressed and you got to come in and get away from everybody. Oh, a wellness I, room. I knew a guy when I worked at Robert Half, every, he had it booked every afternoon from one to two, and that was where he went and took his nap. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so uh, are most companies, do most companies have wellness rooms? They, they yes. Do yes. Yes. Work with America. Yep. Boy, I'll tell you, people who work today, lunch rooms. people who work today are such wusses <laughs> for crying out loud. They got to have, do you have a wellness room where you are, Mandy? <laughs> no, I just have an office and I shut my door. If people are <laughs> okay, that's your wellness room. We have a break room. Well, yeah, every place that, that's a that's a term for what used to be the place where you go to eat. Well, yeah, we have, and and we do have um, some practicing Muslims that do go and pray, so they go into one of the extra offices and do oh, their okay. Prayer. I saw that. I saw that in Heathrow the first time it said, um, you know, said like gates, uh, you know, B15 through B20 and it had another sign that said optional praying room or something like that. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's very nice. It's nice mm -hmm. to see. Uh, and I, have a I have a decanter of Johnny Walker Platinum in my office. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes it a wellness room. <laughs> Mike, are you really in the airport? Yeah, I'm in SeaTac right now. Actually, it was funny. I want to hear Edward Berger say this. I literally, swear to God, just heard the announcer say, last call for Walla Walla Washington. I want to hear Walla Edward Walla Berger. Washington. <laughs> <laughs> well, does anybody remember? Nobody remembers Jack Benny, but uh, last train I leaving do. for I remember uh, Jack Anaheim, Benny. Azusa, and Cucamonga. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, do you think you looked a little bit like Jack Benny when you were younger or, no, or Groucho no. Mark? How about Groucho Mark? No, you know who I actually you know? I do kind of looked like uh when I didn't have my beard and everything like that. Believe it or not, Paul Simon. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I see yeah. it. I see it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. Uh well if I if I show you a picture like my WIND really glossy picture of me smiling like a game show host, uh, it looks, I, I, you can see the Paul Simon in that. Yeah. Yeah. At least I always felt. I would take an autograph picture of that and put it in my podcast studio, Alex. If you have one, I'll take it. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I can, I can e email you a copy of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I'll autograph it for you too. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, so Shecky, uh, I want to ask Shecky a big question: uh, the new Doctor Who comments. Well, let's see. Three years ago was the Year of the Woman, so we hired a woman to be the Doctor. Now it's the Year of the Black Gentleman or Women, so we hire a black person. He's good looking. Yeah, he might be fine. I mean, I don't know him. I'm sure. Know. I'm sure he's going to be fine because uh, Russell Davies, who resuscitated the whole franchise years ago, yeah, yeah. It has I'm always sure made it's always made good decisions. He came out with David Tennant and so on. Yes, Mike is signing yes. off, everyone. Okay, Mike. Bye bye. B bye bye. Have a nice flight. Don't let anybody steal your autograph picture. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Uh, anyway, um, uh, but no, Russell T. Davies has always had good instincts, so I'm, I'm sure he made it. I'm sure the, I'm sure the, the guy is a good actor that, you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that they didn't do it just because he was black. He supposedly is on some Netflix series right now. Yeah. It's something I want to call it sex education, a British show, but I don't know if that's exactly. I think it's called Sex Education. Oh, yeah, that, that's, yeah a good, that's, that's, that's a good show. It's a good yeah. show. I don't know who this guy is, but it's, that's an interesting, funny show. I'd like to say he's the black guy on the show, but judging Probably. by most shows today, they're nothing but black people. On the well, show. again, you saw the Tony nominations today. The Michael Jackson musical got 10 Tony nominations. What? Explain why. 
How, what kind of reviews did it get? Mediocre. Oh God. <laughs> oh God. What else? What else was up? Uh, is a uh, nominated for Tonys? Any show that had black men or women in it. <laughs> <laughs> Who happened to be gay? You might add that one. You know, like I forget the name of this play or musical that got eleven Tony nominations. All black actors and actresses. Really? Fine. Yeah. Really? Well, it might be a good show. Could be. Yeah, I mean, you follow this stuff. I mean, you follow, you read the reviews, don't you? Before you go to see these things. Nah, not always. I mean, I just went to see the skin of our teeth. Thor- Thornton Wilder. I heard, play. It's, I heard it's awful. I, it was it was great. Uh, the oh, cast really? was the cast was fantastic. It's a major production. I mean, it's a weird play if you don't like a three hours. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's a weird. Thor- I Wild hate to play. say this for whatever you paid for a ticket for that. What was the ticket price on that, Steve? If you don't mind me asking. I got it from TDF for like thirty nine bucks. Okay, and you could have seen you could have seen me so do I it. Get a you, ticket for fifty bucks. You could have seen me do it in high school for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> But I bet you didn't have it. It's an all black cast, which and, and a whole and a, and a dinosaur, that, a giant, giant dinosaur, and a woolly mammoth on the stage in the puppets. first act. Yeah, the puppets. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, um, uh, uh, that play was done a lot in high schools. Yeah. I mean, that was that was because whatever play you did in high school had to cut the mustard of not being too terribly serious, you know. And Thornton Wilder was very Americana and he was always his stuff was you well, could always do it in high more school. so more so our town. I mean, this is a weird play. I mean, this family lives from the dinosaur age through the flood, <laughs> through the Civil War into yeah. the 40s, I guess, at that point, or yeah. I don't know, the modern yeah. era. Yeah. But it was always a fun little play to do, you yeah. know, so it's not yeah. one of his best plays, but no. serviceable. No. Yeah, but they're bringing a black death of a salesman to Broadway, and some like it hot. The musical is all African American, right? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense, right? They're jazz musicians. They're not going to be Jack Lemmon, Tony Curtis, does he? But you know, who knows? <laughs> well, um, the best thing Thornton Wilder ever wrote was uh, well, Topper. No, no, Shadow of a Doubt. Shadow of a Doubt. Oh. Yes. He, here was a guy who wrote Our Town, which is if you want to talk about a safe play. Okay, our town is it's it's schmaltzy and it's it's reminiscent of small town USA. And what Hitchcock did was hire Thornton Wilder to do a thing about a small town to turn it on its side, Santa Rosa, California, right up the road from me, and then turn it upside down with a just absolutely the most evil murderer you could possibly think of coming into their midst. What Uncle Charlie. Uncle Uncle Charlie, Charlie. Joseph Cotton, yeah. yeah, and it was. I'm. I think uh, probably Hitch, it, it's, it's, Hitch, it's one of his best pictures, as far as I'm concerned. And it was, was his, his. It was his favorite. He was thought his, it was his best movie. Oh yeah. really? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 It's a great movie. Just a terrific. Movie. And but then right. Thornton Wilder, as I said, also wrote Topper. You know, he created the character of Topper. Really, I didn't Topper know that. Was great. I thought that was somebody else. Oh. Uh, oh no! You know, you're right. Thorn Smith. You're right. Orange Smith. Oh. Yeah. 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 Because I always remember they used to um, radio when they would do Topper, they would say Topper from the whatever by Thorn Smith. Play yeah, you're right. I got a, I got that wrong. You're right. Yeah. But uh, well, you can't always be right. But Topper <laughs> was great. Who was it? Was it Leo G. Carroll? Yeah. Well, no, the movie was Rolling Young and then the TV show was Leo TV G. Carroll. Series. Yeah. Yeah. You know the movie that Roland Young did? Are we getting vague here? Is anybody keeping up with this? Uh, Roland Smith did a great movie. Roland called, Young. Young, Young. Roland Young, rather, did a great movie called The Man Who Could Work Miracles, which was taken from an H.G. Wells story. 1936 British. Yeah. 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 And it's just about a guy one day suddenly realizes he has all these powers. And he, he says, I mean, something like go to hell and then somebody bursts into flames, you know, so. Um, but uh, anyway, we, enough of vague stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's it for our show then. Uh, <laughs> mm. uh, Mandy, does any of this make any sense to you? No, I'm sorry. I tuned out. 
Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let me see here. What uh, I, I don't want to talk too much about the news, um, uh, uh, but uh, uh, the, you know we got the whole thing going on with the Supreme Court, uh, which is something because really. It, 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 didn't they just release one opinion? That was all Alito's opinion? Yes, but, you know, there are five conservatives on the court, so that's what's going to happen. Well, you assume that that's what's going to happen, but you don't know. There, there are rumors that uh, Judge Roberts might uh, uh, yeah, Judge, change his mind. John Roberts is pissed off about the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, because he, he is a little pissed about this. And did you, but did you see, this is, this is not really talking politics, but did you see Alito's reasons for voting yeah some guy from the 16th century some 16th maybe it was 14th century it was 14th century yeah yeah it was 14th century he quoted somebody who by the way i've never heard of yeah who also believed i think that witches should be burned at the stake and so on this is the same guy he's quoting him for his reasons on why he's voting this way it's really of course, Saturday Night Live took it and, and went with that. What would you say? Saturday Night Live opened with that. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. It, it's, it's, it, what absurd world do we live in now where somebody is quoting a 14th century guy who believed in burning people at the stake? Yes, Charlie. And then Alito said that uh, Roe v. Wade didn't have a long historical uh, principle of, of of having privacy or whatever that wasn't based on a long historical uh, well that's maybe because you only got around to it 50 years ago yeah. right. I, mean, I said well fine there's a long historical <laughs> basis for slavery so let's bring that back yeah <laughs> sure let's bring out let's uh, bring back all the old favorites <laughs> yeah. the, 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 the white the white guys that wrote the constitution in 1787 did not mention abortion therefore we did not have it. They right. didn't mention women either. They did not <laughs> mention them either. Correct. They, they mentioned uh, other races other than white. No, they didn't. I mean, was, wasn't the uh, three fifths of a man in the Constitution? Yes, it was. I think blacks counted as three fifths of a human right. being. Yeah, but also yeah. the the people who wrote the Constitution, most of them were slave owners. Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. Which three fifths was that, by the way? <laughs> was it the bottom half? The muscles. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, when we have a Supreme Court justice issuing a verdict of how he feels about something based on a 14th century lunatic, asshole, lunatic it's really amazing. Yeah. Is he trying I have to have a question? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, 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 Mandy, who might need an abortion. We don't know. <laughs> oh. ah! I'm off, thankfully. Um, I have a question. Like, I'm not I haven't been keeping up with it. So what was the court case that led them to have to write an opinion? Who had a court case that went all the way to well, the Supreme Court? Oh, this is a Louisiana thing, isn't it? A Louisiana Miss, law? Mississippi. Maybe. Yeah. Mississippi. Yeah. Mississippi. yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's okay. made, you know somebody came with a, law, a ruling in Mississippi or a law that that said that you couldn't have abortions, and they you know they brought it up and this is what they're this is what they're writing something on, but it's not hasn't come out yet, no. you know. No. So I mean, uh, what happens if all of a sudden it comes out and it doesn't do much of anything? Yeah, and, well, it should be a big crime. I mean, is MSNBC going to say sorry for wasting your time way back when yeah. every day yeah. when we went on the air and we're talking about, you know, uh, dogs were going to fight in street with cats based upon this verdict, you know, that is or, yeah, making everybody hysterical. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think I think I look, I think there's reason to be worried, but uh, a very definite reason to be worried. But. Come on, let's. But I think it will still people. be up to the states if they choose to have abortion. You know, yeah. it won't be a nationwide ban, I believe. But Unless 26 the of the states. The Senate. What? Unless the Republicans take over Congress in, in the fall, then they'll pass a federal law banning abortion. And even California and New York won't be able to have it. 
That's right. Yeah. So um, get out and vote. But hey, we can have gambling. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. we gambling and pot. We got our pot. We, that that we got. In fact, what's happening to that thing in Congress where they're in in the Congress where they're trying to just pass a countrywide law legalizing marijuana? It's stuck in committee, I think. Huh? It's still yeah. it's still stuck in committee. Yeah. yeah. Well, having sex without a condom will then be gambling. So it'll be the same sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm telling you, if we live in a we live in crazy times. Jeez. You know. See, this is what when nice people get together and they're civil with each other, this is the kind of discussion we have, which isn't yeah, you know, it isn't isn't nasty or mean. You know, no, you're. I don't want to say it this way. You're almost making a joke about all this stuff. Yeah. Well, it, but it, it, if you get down to it, I mean, it is a joke. It's a very unfunny joke, mm. but it's a joke nonetheless. I mean, that we live in a time where where we're sitting here listening to some moron because he's on the Supreme Court espousing the views of a 14th century moron. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, come on. Uh, this has been the law case law for 50 years. Uh, it's been a right given to people. You don't take rights away. You know, you give oh. them back. In the case of uh, prohibition, we gave them back. But we had to do that through an amendment to the Constitution, which I never could figure out. Somebody apprised me of this. We it was ill we made alcohol illegal about 14 years later, something like that. We made it, we reversed that decision by having another amendment to the Constitution, which reversed it, right? Why don't we just have that one and do away with the one that outlawed it? But it's still there. It's still one of the amendments to the Constitution. It just it kind of says, remember that one we wrote back then? Never mind. Yeah, isn't, isn't it interesting that the right to drink alcohol was so much so important that they made an amendment to the constitution yeah, right. um, yeah. but yet people can't even control what happens inside their own body you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly like, oh. exactly exactly uh, but it was uh oh here we go oh look this here comes uh here comes uh, i'm i'm gonna say that it's uh is it, jason. Is it albert it's jason jason oh okay jason. Jason, hello, Jason. Are you there? I gotta go, so I'll be tag teamed oh, up here. Okay, uh, 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 tap him on the shoulder. See ya. Go ahead. Okay. See you later, Steve. Gonna miss bye -bye. you. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. I needed Steve's advice. Oh man. Uh, yeah. Hello there, Jason. How are you? Doing good. Oh, you're excited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tired just got back from my kids eighth grade dc trip got back uh yesterday morning but was oh, there for like four days to sleep for crap now uh, you took your kid or were there a lot of kids that went a lot of kids that went i think all together there was like 80 of us 85 yeah, and, and what do they go to washington dc for to learn about our government almost <laughs> i think it's more to tease the adults to come back to see all their <laughs> stuff you know <laughs> mm. My friend, my friend's kid went on a field trip from California to Washington last week. Really? Uh, that's cool. We yeah. saw like three different schools there from our state too, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's funny though, Brian. You're saying your kids, kids from your neighborhood, did it uh, because when I was a kid, man, Washington was too far away. Oh yeah, we did the planetarium, and yeah, we we went up to San Francisco for Redwood City. So we did a lot of field trips. Up there. Oh, yeah. We went to the Japanese tea garden. That was our big. <laughs> I went to D.C. in the seventh grade. And the coolest thing about it, it was like Georgia did this whole thing with safety patrols or like one of the counties. If you were a safety patrol, you got to go to this Washington, D.C. trip. The coolest thing about it is we rode Amtrak. Okay. I'm a very Amtrak. But when, wow. once you got there, you got to see a lot of stone monuments for dead people, right? Yeah. I mean, you yeah. know, they let us loose in the Smithsonian. That was the other thing. They just let us go off into pairs by ourselves. Marjorie, when you were growing up, 
when you were growing up, they ever take you to Washington D.C.? Yeah, school? that was our that was our our trip. See, huh. we never I got that in trip. California. You know, they just you know. We yeah, just, I, I love it too that they talked about you know being over in Virginia, and I think it was Alexandria. They're saying how the North occupied them during the thing. And I say, <laughs> I keep on thinking about like, no, maybe we didn't occupy. Maybe we liberated them first. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, I came up with a theory. I was telling this to Shecky the other day that I, I just believe that, and I have always believed that when the uh, when the South wanted to uh, secede from the Union. We probably just said, well, don't let the door hit you on the ass on the way out, you know, and just let them secede. We'd have less problems today if they had seceded. Either that or we'd be at war with them again or something. And then at the hotel, too, was, uh, we'd get back there, like, right as the hotel bar would close. So you maybe wow. had enough time to have one drink, and that was it. And, wow. uh, you know, so I was asking the bartender, you know, about different bars around there, and he was mentioning some that you could smoke in. And I think, oh, you guys can smoke in bars over here? He goes, well, some of them, because the communist north is stopping us from smoking. And yeah, I'm, saying, I'm like, dude, your teeth are so yellow. I can guarantee you that's why you don't you agree with it, because you're a smoker. You're nasty yellow teeth. It's like, oh. But the communist north is stopping them from smoking in bars. That's how their attitude still is. I still say wow. let them go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we, we uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, when I was growing up in school, we we just went we went to the planetarium. We went to the Japanese tea garden. We went to the Morrison. Uh, what, what, what's the name of the aquarium there? There's a big aquarium there. Uh, and we went there. And that, that was our, that was the, we didn't learn anything from any of that. Just a fish swim. Birds got to fly. The, you have to go to the missions and do your mission report or something. The young, the young museum. Oh, oh, uh, mission Dolores, mission Dolores. Mission Dolores, yeah. That, oh, look who uh, you know. I was thinking he was calling, and it was it was Jason instead. But now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Yay! Albert Reynoso. No way. Wait a minute, Albert. Well, he'll be here in a second. There, there he is. is. Oh hey! God, you're getting to look like <laughs> Santa Claus. No, <laughs> you're you're getting to do. do it, do you go out and beg for money with that beard? <laughs> oh, oh, we need oh, turn on your mic. Turn, turn on your mic. Turn on your, turn mic. on your mic. Yeah, yeah. There I thought the go. mic was automatically engaged. Well, that's a, that's getting to be quite a beard there, guy. Mm-hmm. Last time I talked to you, it was just kind of like mine. Yeah, I thought well, you used to work in broadcasting. Top, I'll be okay. Huh? When I get to ZZ Top, I'll I'll think about doing it. <laughs> what, what, are you, you're not going to do a Dave Letterman on this, are you? Quite possibly, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. yeah, yeah. I I do the two extremes. I let everything grow in the winter time, and the it gets warm. Yeah. I shave it all off. That's what I'll do. Why not? Yeah, well, but you live in Florida. It's already hot enough already, yeah. isn't it? We have air conditioning here. We're, we're not outside. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, man? You know, I haven't been out in maybe five days. Well, don't grow a beard. You're, well, you're it's still, it's, you still it's still too cold here. Hmm. Now, well, this I was just out on the porch reading. It was fine. Really? It's yeah. May, though. It's, it's not gonna, May weather. It's going to be in the 70s and 80s here next week. It's been stuck like the 40s and 50s. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be like 70 too. tomorrow too. here in New York. You know. What's the temperature in Florida right now? Do you know? Uh, close um, to 90, I think. We're close to 90, we close to 90, do we? <laughs> 99 in Austin yesterday. Oh, oh shit. Oh. 99 in Austin? Oh, right, yeah. all that heat oh. is going up. The temperature, well, the temperature right now, oh, it's 66. It, where did that come from, Marjorie? It was 52 when I woke it's up. It's going to be in the 70s tomorrow. Oh, good. Yeah. I'll go take a walk finally. <laughs> but now you can't take a walk because now COVID has sunk its deep fangs yeah. into us once again in New York City. Was that right? Oh, yeah. Wow. Our wonderful yeah. governor came down with it. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, and she is wonderful. Well, you know what's wonderful about her? Late at night, she's working <laughs> at her desk in the, <laughs> in the executive <laughs> mansion. Yes. There are these yeah. ads for her running for governor. 
now. It's late at night, and the lights are still on at the governor's mansion, and she's oh, flipping gross. through pages. Turning <laughs> pages. And I'm going, oh, boy, she's really getting to the, getting the work done. She's written, she's signed over 400 bills. Yeah, most governors do in, in a short amount of time. You know, we need this for tips for the, you know, for the chauffeur staff, for the Capitol and whatever, and sign it. You know, and I've told you, if the Republicans put up a decent candidate, I will vote for that person. Really? I do not like this woman. Suppose he, he likes Donald. Lie. If he likes Donald Trump, though, you won't consider him no. worthy of no. your vote. No, 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 no. Oh, if if they if they were to put up a reasonable candidate, the Republican. You know, if Andrew, if Juliet, if Giuliani's kid runs, I would be running the other way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want to hear stupidity? We saw we were watching John Oliver. Mm-hmm. And in the Philippines, oh yeah, guess they, who's what, running? Marco, and Marcos's kid got Marcos's not kid, Bonbon bon or whatever his name bon. is, or Bobo. Yeah, he's Bobo. leading Bobo. in the poll too. No, he yeah. won. He won. He won already. Well, he won. I oh yeah, because so. it was it was when when was the election? Was some, I think the election Sunday. was over the weekend. Yeah. yeah. So Bobo or Bonbon bon or whatever his name is is yeah. now the. If the uh, if president, uh, whatever, whatever that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Well, this is where the world is now. Well, yeah. Nice. But I mean, if they ran a, a Republican against her who was a reasonable Republican, I I would vote for that person. You know, if it were. And and would you know? Wouldn't some Republican in New York want to be reasonable rather than go along with the all the incredible nastiness well, i gather there is some guy on long island who is reasonable who might be running or might win the primary yeah but I, then i'd have to then pay attention and see what this person has to say yeah yeah you know the minute he says you know i love mr trump it's like eh, forget it but every time we see this ad with kathy hochel I think is her name, uh, yeah. s- s- sitting there turning pages with the lamp on at her desk. Oh. You know, oh god! Oh, I got to give another billion dollars to build a stadium in um, Buffalo, where I come from. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. She's doing that, isn't she? Oh, oh, hey, I think look. it's like I think she's. Uh, I think we're paying about eight hundred million, eight hundred million dollars. Jeff Stein is joining us, folks. I thought it said Jeffrey Epstein. Whoa. No. <laughs> no, it's Jeffrey Stein. But I didn't stop to think about that. It is awfully close. He's an EP away from being hated. <laughs> or love. Jeff, turn on your camera. Turn on your microphone. Turn on something. <laughs> Do it there, oh, there you go. go. His, his wife good. always has to help. Yeah, get technical support. Eh? Now, I'm, on. now I'm talking. <laughs> yeah, I've spent all weekend long on tech with tech support. I love that. I love oh, getting. Good. Oh, I. What? What's the long? It, how many here? Have, oh, ever had to call tech support? Would you raise your hands, please? It's pretty much yeah. all of us. Okay. Yeah. What's the longest yeah. amount of time? That you've had to wait to get something done from the time you first called them till the time you finally solved the problem. Two hours. Two hours. Two hours? That's what Pam said. How about you, uh, Jason? I'd say at least four hours, but that's, oh. that was also at work too. So even though I was getting paid for it, I still hated yeah. it. Yeah. Brian? One hour. How about you? How about you, Mandy? Probably a couple of hours. I don't think I'd have the patience more than that. Maybe an hour at the moment. How about you, Scott? Know. How about you, Scott? I don't think I ever called tech support. I just what? reboot. Yeah, well, <laughs> I do that before I even call them. But then if you call yeah. them, they're going to tell you to reboot anyway. So why do it? <laughs> you know. Yeah. Edward Berger, how long have you been online? Uh, I, I don't. I, the only time I ever called tech support was when I first got a computer. So it was a long time ago. Yeah. Glenn or Frisco is out calling tech support right now. Um, 
Marjorie, how long have you been on with tech support? You probably had to do well, it for work. The other day, I was an hour and 25 minutes and I hung up the phone. And it wasn't even tech support. That was for you to try and what? Get money on a ticket or something? or change Something. But I was on the phone. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. Charlie, how about you? Probably at least four hours. Okay. Shecky? Uh -huh. Never called him. Never called him. I got on with you come over and then ask you to do it. <laughs> I, got, I got on with AT&T because I was having problems. Okay. And um, with my, with my cell phone and Again? I would know with my watch, I couldn't get my watch online because it's one with a cellular. Right. And I went from one person to another, to another, then had to, they called me back the next day to see what they could do. And between all those calls, I spent seven hours and they didn't solve the problem. Jesus. I finally went online, saw one button you could push on their site and turn the watch on. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're having me turn off the watch, turn on the watch, turn off the phone, turn on the phone. Da -da -da -da. Seven hours later. Same person? Send them a bill. No, no, this was like two different people. Two different people. That was a SIM card issue, wasn't it? I should have called Albert. He would have known how to solve it. <laughs> or if you knew anybody, Why would you for at and <laughs> Well, I always relied on you. Something that works a lot better than tech no. support. Is I, always, I always used to say, just turn it over to my producer. He'll take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Maybe another producer. But I, I, was, I, was, I shoved it on to somebody else. He was, he was the kind of producer that, I mean, he was the best producer. Best producer I ever had. I mean, he was just incredible. That's not saying a lot. <laughs> no, I had some good ones. I had some pretty good ones. Especially you know. when he doesn't remember to turn the mic on. But no, <laughs> no but he was, he was, uh, I think I would have to say, if you said, if you said, who was the best producer I ever had, I would say it was Albert. But the one thing Albert wouldn't do, he hated booking guests. It's not the booking guests, it's the dealing with the publicists. Because uh -oh. a lot of them were assholes. So that, that was the thing. I They're probably know. assholes because you thought they were assholes. No, a lot of them were, were great people, but a good number of them were assholes. Mm -hmm. And it's gotten worse over the years. I'm sure. PR people. <laughs> yeah, because all they do is they, they, book, they book through this now, you know? They, yeah. They there's no conversation. There's no email. There's a quick text and that's it. Well, um, you, you got happy when they, you were feeling good when they finally did away with you having to book and we had a main booker at Sirius XM, one person that all the booking went through, then they would parcel the, the interviews out for the most part, wouldn't they? And that didn't help at all. You know, it was no difference. It, it still was a pain in the ass for you? Yeah, still a pain in the ass. Was I a pain in the ass for you? Just, oh, never. <laughs> just, just checking in, ah. you know. Because my wife thinks I'm a pain in the ass, so you certainly must. Well, she's never produced your radio show, has she? No, she hasn't. <laughs> she doesn't know what a real pain in the ass is. <laughs> yeah, but you know how you know how to. We 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 worked we worked well together, actually. Yeah, the last few weeks were, were really good. <laughs> so they told us you guys are out. We had a great time. Yeah, we had a great time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oh, y'all were the best part of my day on Sirius XM. Really? Yeah. I used to love this. Well, we had a good time. We had a pretty good time. Yeah, we did. We you did. know, that's probably why we're no longer there. Right. You know, is uh, because uh, they wanted me to go in there and do a political show. And uh, I was desperate for a job. So I said, okay. They said, would you go on Sirius XM? Would you go on Sirius? I can't remember what it was called at the time. Sirius left. Because we need somebody there who really can, you know. And I said, well, I don't want to do politics all the time. In fact, probably I only want to do it half the time. And they said, that's fine. Just as long as you touch on it every now and then. But by the end of the years, they felt we weren't political enough, you know. And yet I was never hired to be particularly political. Yes. Should have gotten uh, it in writing. Huh? Wasn't Should have gotten it in writing. Yeah. Wasn't one of your jobs that you actually, like, you basically begged for the job and you said i'll work for free i just you know i'll take the, that's it that was life. it the serious was, was that was it yeah 
Yeah, I mean, but it wasn't I've, it also when you first went out to California, the sec, you know, in the eighties, you no. went out there without a contract. If I remember no, right. I went out there for an audition for a week. An audition, and after right. a week, they decided they wanted me, so we made the deal. I came back, picked up my stuff, went back out there and lived. But no, with a serious XM, I just said to them, I, I kept trying to get a job there. And this one guy who was could give me the job or not give me a job said one day finally said, I hate to keep you keep you on the I like this for, you know, all the time. But he said, we just don't have the money to do it with. And I said, what if I told you I'd work for nothing? <laughs> and you can give me a percentage of the advertising. And he said, sounds good to me. When can you start? <laughs> well, I started. And then after a couple of weeks of being there, the, the head of the that division was talking, it was talking to me one day and said, we can't keep not paying you. There's something yeah. wrong about that. That's illegal. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I, they said, how much, he said to me, how much would you like? And I thought to myself, I'll overthink it. Cause you know, but I'll, uh, you know, I said sheepishly 75,000. And they said, how would a hundred thousand do? <laughs> I never had that happen to me in my life. Wow. <laughs> You know, and so I started out at a hundred thousand. I said, said hundred and seventy-five thousand. Why are you cutting <laughs> me back? Like that? But then, when they hired, they hired, uh, they hired uh, Albert at a hundred and fifty thousand, and that pissed the shit out of me. <laughs> and Lynn Samuels was making two fifty. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, actually, actually, as it turned out. Yeah. One of the you see they they let me go and they let him go and we thought it might be the money because he you were the highest paid producer I think at Sirius XM outside of Baba Booey right you know. yeah but wasn't Howard paying Baba Booey's salary yes yeah. yes yeah. yes but he was making uh, you know, six hundred million no well, not that much but he was, he was six hundred million for five years I think yeah but he was making a lot of money. But but on the other hand, for a producer, you were way overpriced so far as they were concerned. But we got in there early. Way undervalued, too. No, we were <laughs> we were in there when Mel Carmazan was running the place. And and, uh, you know, we had a really good uh, head of our division and they they didn't play cheap. They really didn't. They were they were pretty good about it. You know, so. What the hell? Yeah. Things things change. Yeah, yeah. That's where I discovered you, so I'm glad you were on there. Is that how you discovered me? Yeah, me I didn't live in California to hear you on the radio. So. <laughs> well, right. You know, it's funny in in radio. There's a, a thing where you get known by a certain amount of people for a certain thing, and then you can move to another part of the country. And then that people, those people know you for a whole different thing. Like when I first started here in New York, I was kind of known as the youth guru, right? I had rock and roll people on, which nobody did. I had lefty politics uh, people on like Abby Hoffman and so on, and, and which nobody did. And so I got this reputation. But then I moved to California and I started doing all the shows with the comedians and got known for something else entirely. So that mm -hmm. I have two sets of, of people who say, oh, I used to listen to you. And they both have a different perception of me mm -hmm. and what I did. But that was the value of what you did in radio in those days. Today, you're just syndicated. You're everywhere. You're all over the country at the same time. But, but then you literally could go somewhere else and reestablish yourself in an entirely different way. So, mm -hmm. you know. How you doing, Jeff? Good. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. You look healthy. I am. I feel, I'm feeling uh, a lot better than I was uh, a couple of weeks ago. Really? Why weren't you feeling good? Well, I was taking a drug that really, uh, it, it actually gave me like a <laughs> miniature stroke. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a little seizure. Oh. Unexpected. Okay. Oh, and, uh, I stopped taking that drug. Obviously. Good, good. You look healthy right now. You know. Yeah, I feel good. And you were sitting, you're sitting on screen right next to Albert. 
Oh, and the twins. two of you, it, it, it looks like he grew out your beard. <laughs> yeah, he, he did. How does your wife feel about the beard, Albert? Does not like. Uh-huh. Does not like. Does not like, no. So that's why you're going to keep it, right? No, I like it, so that's why I'm going to keep it. Yeah, yeah. Is it the hair or is it oh, that it's all gray? What's that? Nobody so is it the hair that it's the color? No, she doesn't mind the color. She just doesn't like the beard. Well, I mean, you you grew your beard that way. You grew yours, Jeffrey, and I grew mine because just, you know, looks good on us. Albert's growing it now because it pisses his wife off. No, not at all. And I claim that David Letterman grew his to the length he has to just piss the entire world off. Yeah, but don't forget, Dave had a beard before he had the TV show. Hmm. Well, he, I think, what happens is when you're on TV like that every day, you get a little tired of shaving every day. Well, he would shave every day, put on that 10 cent cologne, and then he has not shaved since the day our show went off the air, and now it's seven years. Actually, I think he's trimmed it. I saw it recently. Oh, he trims it. No, he does trim it. Yeah. But I'm saying he's not been clean shaven. It's also shorter than it was. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, because I watch him, he does these things. On, his whole idea of doing TV now or doing podcasts. And he seems to be really enjoying them, too. Yeah. Yeah. He's having fun. And they're only like six, seven minutes, you know. Yeah. And you make some money off of that. You know. Well, I trim mine a lot. Yeah. Well, I did like I did mine today. I when I when I take my shower once a week. Gross. <laughs> what do you mean gross? I don't do it. I don't anything. know why she's mad at you all the time. Jeez. What? I don't know why Marjorie's mad at you all the time. She only takes a shower once a week. It's gross. Yourself. I take it every day. Liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Whoa. Right, Can I change the subject? A whole deeper. <laughs> what? Can I change the subject? I, I change <laughs> change how, how, how is it? So, so we have some New York people. How is New York like Fourth of July? Is it like a crazy stay out of hot. town type of weekend, it's or is hot. it? No, actually, it's a one day one day in the year you want to stay in town because everyone gets, leaves. Everyone leaves. They mm. go out to Fire Island. I mean, yeah. I've been out to Fire Island on Fourth of July, and it's like, why did they come out here? All the people back in New York are here you know so i i always find that if you stay in manhattan if you go to like the fireworks and everything you go and it's just nice it's like a nice little town believe it or not yeah Yeah, i think we're gonna go i think the family's going there fourth of july weekend what new york yeah so i'm I'm invited everybody to dinner whoever wants to go (laughs) wherever you guys want to go we're good to dinner Okay. Oh. I'm paying, except I'm not paying Landis flying all the way from California. <laughs> okay, what's the most expensive <laughs> restaurant in New York? Boy? You won't even come see me out here yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> I drive by and I honk. Was it Nobu? Go to Nobu? Uh, no. Nobu is very good, actually. Yeah, how about oh, Lutes? Lutes. Is Lutes still open? No, I don't think no, so. No, that's gone. Is Lutes gone? Huh. For a while yeah. now. Is it... Th- the big steak places. Yeah. Oh, it like Peter Luger's and uh, yeah. what's that other one? Uh, well, Del Frisco, Peter Luger, yeah. Gallagher's. Oh, you know. Homestead. That's a good one. I like that one. Yeah. Well, we had Del Frisco's was in the building we were in at Sirius XM. Yep. And we never went to lunch there or dinner there because it was just too goddamn expensive. Expensive. You can't afford these places. Yeah. The program director used to take us to Tad's. <laughs> yeah. and that's gone no more they called it steak but i don't know <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. oh i used to take the staff out to on um, uh, for christmas lunch we would famous go Dave's. To, we got no fa- yeah famous we go to Dave's. Dave's. that's right famous <gasps> Dave. yeah yeah he remembers he must have listened to us when we did it you know mm-hmm. uh but um uh i i you know i mean we went I was looking online to see what things are costing now. Like, you know, we shop at uh, Costco through uh, what's the, what's the thing we Instacart. use? Uh, Instacart. Instacart. And I look at the prices, the prices of meat 
everything, I mean, how, everything. Where do you where do you take out a loan to be able to yeah. buy a steak? Yeah, it's bad right now out here too. Yeah. I mean, everything. What does a ribeye go for now? A pound in New well, York? Well, I can't tell you because I got to go buy what Costco. No, that, no, I get yours at at Fairway. No, but no, but I'm saying I have to go buy when I look online. I look at Costco because I always remember I used to buy. It's always four to a pack, okay. Mm -hmm. And I used to be able to buy a, a a ribeye for four of them for about thirty five bucks. I think it's all the way up around sixty, isn't it, Chef? Yeah, they're over a hundred. I think they're. Over oh, I told 100. you. Well, not over when I was in Costco. Brisket was forty bucks. Really? Because I used to get. I, I my mother always used to make flank steak, so I liked flank steak, and I, I would like always flank buy steak, flank that's steak. Also thirty bucks now at Costco. Thirty a thirty five, and it was, but it was young, around. I mean, they're larger than I need. You know. Yeah, but yeah. we're like twenty. At, at, or 22 at one point now it's like oh it used to be about 20 bucks for the you know two giant flank steaks in the old you know yes jeff pam just bought a steak today ribeyes. for ribeyes 12 79 a pound not oh, that's, that's not costco nothing 25 dollars a pound for filet here i bought it yesterday so and then i'm prime anymore at costco because in the old yeah, days, how many pounds does the person eat? It was three oh, giant steaks. It's between four, half and three four pounds. Three giant steaks. Well, the trouble is, if you're if you're a family of two, like we are, and Marjorie doesn't like steak. Okay. I don't like meat. Doesn't Just like meat. Yeah, uh, but she doesn't like it, and 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 so consequently, when we would buy it at Costco. Uh, they'd always uh, one would always go bad just because I couldn't eat them fast enough. Shecky's the same situation, and I don't like to freeze meat. Yeah. I can feel it. But loopy. I think I told you when I went to Stu Leonard's the other day, they had small these little small stuffed flank steaks, and it was like eight bucks. So I bought them. That's perfect. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they were like individual portions, small. When you, when you fun. when you check out uh, Stu Leonard's next, check out stuffed flank steak Marjorie. just try that out and see what they got you know so we're you, we're buying a half a pig and we're paying uh 300 bucks so that really ain't bad for all that meat but yeah, a half and, a pig yeah i don't even care for uh beef steaks my favorite steak out there is just a regular pork steak it's the cheapest steak you can get and i absolutely love pork steaks really well you know costco i not costco Stu leonard has um pork um stuff pork like four bucks a pound you know what's the cut of that pork you try that marjorie i don't know i don't even know i didn't buy it like, shoulder you know oh, shoulder well i told her you told me that their meatloaf pork shoulder you told me their meatloaf is terrific yeah and i got a small one it was like half a pound it was like 750 okay, okay. more than enough for me see yeah yeah when you're a single person or a couple like marjorie and i are Costco, the, the stuff that you buy that is is important to you and saves you money is well, toilet paper. it's buying paper. laundry detergent. It's buying exactly. toilet paper. It's buying Coke Zero. It's, you know, but to buy the meats, eh, you know. Yeah. Everything is going up. Everything. Yeah. I know people talk about they don't like to freeze their meat, but I, I don't understand it because we grew up in the country. What do you mean by that exactly? <clears throat> Take their beef and throw it in the freezer and freezing it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. What my family. Yeah. Did. Is that is? Are you? Is that just um, euphemistic for anything that you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've already thrown the two flank steaks in the freezer because oh. I wasn't eating them this week. It, I bought them a week ago. Yeah, some people so say I it kills it, the flavor, you know, but I don't think it does at all. No. I that's think it. Do, I think it does, but I may be wrong. I, I, I agree meat that has antibiotics and it kills the flavor. You build that too. <laughs> You know, my uh, parents used to buy like a half of a beef and then they cut mm -hmm. it up into all different sizes cut. and shapes. Yeah, cut. But, yeah. And it went right into the freezer. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Do you know what my weird. mother used to make? This is strange now that I think about it. And we used to have it for dinner on at least once every couple of weeks chicken feet. Yeah. Oh, really? oh that's Asian. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking Asian. about? Right. Adrian loves chicken feet. We go to dim sum 
And uh, yeah, they Adrian gets chicken feet like nonstop, and so does mm-hmm. Tiffany. They just have a pile a lot of, of books. a lot of meat on the knuckles, right? <laughs> and on the, on yeah, the small, yeah, is there bones in there. It, there, yeah, there are a lot of bones, but you just eat around them. Yeah, and you just spit them out. Just spit them out. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I have an just <laughs> skin and bone. I haven't had chicken I know, feet I like in it years. Though. But, it's, it's really rubber. I don't know. Rubber. Hey, I just looked and uh, we, we've uh, spent the whole hour up already. Wow. Uh, do that smile again there, uh, Albert. That was. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be. Uh, his mugshot. His, his mugshot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Shecky, thank you so much. Nice to uh, see you again. In fact, I call Shecky right after the show. Uh, and actually, what I'll do yeah, we now, do the post show. We, well, that, you we, know, we do the post show. We talk to each other. But what I think I'll do is I'll just call him right now, so he's on the line. <laughs> when, I, oh, Jesus. when I have to, when I have to call him. Let me see here. Is it, is it ringing, uh, Shaggy? Yes. Huh? Yeah. Is, is oh, it's it? wow. Tony. Oh my God, that's a, that's a landline. What the heck is that? Oh, I like landlines. That what's that black thing with? The, what's that cord there? What's all that? <laughs> what are you? What are you holding? Anyway, uh, that's uh, Shecky waiting to talk to me. Okay, and then uh, Charlie Wallace. Thank you so much, Charlie. Great having you here, Edward Berger. Oh, not uh, not you, no, yet. not you yeah. yet. No, right. Len Lafrisco. Uh, he went out and saw Bubbles, my friend Bubbles, the other day, uh, and took a picture of him. And actually, he's looking cool. pretty good. He was terrific. terrific. He's he's a very funny comic. Very. He is. Funny. And uh, Marjorie Miller, she's a very funny comic too. I made sure she laugh. <laughs> She makes me laugh. I don't make her laugh, though. I make yeah, her laugh. Yeah, you do when you take your clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to take him off right now? <laughs> He's still looking at me. Uh, let me see here. Uh, who, who said that, by the way? Not me. Uh, not you. Uh, Marjorie, uh, Scott, thank you so much. Really Welcome. appreciate it. Uh, live from Lodi, it's the music of Brian <laughs> Neary. Um, by the way, we were watching The Godfather. One of the mobsters in the picture's last name is Neary. It's Al Neary, who's the, the side guy. Yes, he's in all three movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> right. Al Neary, and that's my grandfather's name was Al Neary, and then my name is Brian Alfred Neary. Oh, we're, not, we're not going to screw around with you. Then. <laughs> yeah, um, we don't want to mess around with you anymore. Anyway. Let's see here. Uh, oh, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, That's the guy who kills uh, Fredo. Kills Fredo in the in the in Lake Tahoe. That was that was Al Neri. Wow. Right. And I want to thank owner for calling today. That's what it always says, <laughs> Jason. That's right. Uh, and uh, you got to just all you have to do is go. I, I think I did download it. I just I can't. I got to go into it after it's downloaded and change my name, but yeah, I didn't do it yeah. before because my kid for school. Albert, gosh, I got to call you and we got to do a little thing together. Good to see you all. Yeah, I'll call you. We'll, we'll do a little Zoom call for the show, promise, the other show. Promises. Oh, no, I'm, I, I want I really <laughs> Start want. doing your own show again once in a while. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, don't. <laughs> I'm saying goodbye. I Jeffrey, to thank you. Goodbye. And Mandy, always, always a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for saying me to quit in time. Yeah. <laughs> we always refer to her as our Darla, you know, for our, our game. And uh, and finally, Edward Berger, who will do the sign off by saying, That's all, folks. <laughs> Bye, everybody. That never everybody gets wave goodbye. <laughs> we'll just say that's it.